Hey sisters, in today's first ever Sunday Sermon Reflection video, I'm actually going to do a reflection on a homily. It's called a homily because it was a message given by a priest. Or, I'm sorry, not a priest, uh, a bishop. Uh, his name is Bishop Barron, you can YouTube him, and he always get, puts his homilies, maybe not all of them, but he does put homilies on, on YouTube. So you just type in Bishop Barron and there are some homilies there. Normally, I really find his homilies very engaging, and this one too, this one was actually called, today's message was called, The Voice of Consciousness, and he read from 1 Samuel 3, chapter 4, chapter, uh, 1 Samuel 3, so chapter 3, verses 4 through 20. I don't normally listen to homilies. Uh, I, don't, I don't call myself a Catholic. I don't consider myself Catholic. But I, I do think that Bishop Barron's homilies often have an abundance of truth in them. And I, I love usually a lot of his homilies. Today, the one he gave, the voice of consciousness, was particularly interesting to me. And I want to share with you my thoughts on it, and then I want to hear your comments uh, about it. Uh, and I want to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below. So don't forget to do that, you know, throughout the video or after the video. While I often enjoy watching Bishop Barron's homilies, right, because he's Catholic, uh, I because they, they do often abound in a lot of truth and I really love his style of delivery and I love really the style of, of his homilies. I, I, I love how he shares his insights and, and his spiritual knowledge. I, I really love it and I'm not even Catholic but I do like to watch his homilies because they, they abound in truth and, and that's always what I, I seek. Right, and if if I if I find a pastor or a bishop who gives messages that are mostly always truthful, those are the ones I want to listen to, whether or not I'm Catholic. So I do like to listen to Bishop Barron. I would say most of his his videos are they abound in truth. You'll learn so much from them. But I I had. A couple of, you know, I, I felt a lot of the things he said today about the the voice of conscience, you know, just, I think he didn't consider a lot of things about the conscience. And I want to start on a positive note, though. He did say, right, so his story, right, his homily came from, I'll tell you now, I actually have it here, First Samuel 3, 4 through 20, when Samuel is called by the Lord. And he did say that, you know, in the story, Samuel is sleeping in the temple. And he says, when people are sleeping, and when we see that people are sleeping in the Bible, when we see that behavior, that it often means that people aren't paying attention to God. And that was what Samuel was doing. He was in the temple. Are we supposed to be sleeping in church or in the temple? No. I imagine Samuel was probably sleeping there because he probably just lived there. I think, anyway. I don't think he went to, to the temple to worship God and then fell asleep. You know, he... I, I think he just spent a lot of time there and, uh, and... and went to sleep. I could be wrong. Maybe he just fell asleep, but I, I don't... I don't think that that's what happened. I, I think that people would just spend a lot of time in the temple and in the night they would go to sleep. So... He was asleep in the temple, and God calls him, God calls, God calls him three times, and the first two times he thinks it's Eli, another character in the Bible, calling him, and Eli, on the third, the third time God calls him, he, I believe, goes again to Eli, and Eli tells him, the Lord is calling you, so this is what you're going to say, say, here I am, and that's what Samuel does. But, you know, that was something that I really took away from the sermon or from the homily that I really liked that, and that I never really noticed in the Bible, that when we see that behavior of sleeping, it's usually not a good thing. Not that sleep isn't good, but when someone, but when we see it happening in the Bible, it's usually not the best thing. Like, for example, when Jesus was praying and he asked his disciples to pray with him, what were they doing? They were sleeping, right? They fell asleep. And Jesus was like, you can't just stay up with me to pray. And they couldn't. 
and it wasn't the best thing, right? They, they should have tried to stay awake to, to pray with Jesus because his hour was coming. So, yeah, when, 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 we, when we see that behavior in the Bible, sleep, that's not the best thing. And that's a really cool thing I learned from this homily. Now I'm going to get into, in this next portion of the video, what I, where I think he went wrong with this voice of conscience. Bishop Barron says, or is of, has this notion that the voice of conscience is essentially the voice of God, right? So, and if we're saying that our conscience is the voice of God, then we're saying that a person's conscience is perfect, right? Because the voice of God is perfect. And I understand why he would say that because what we believe a conscience is, is that it tells us what's right from wrong. And so to believe that a person's conscience is the voice of God because it tells us what's right from wrong is to also believe that everybody knows the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Now, in Genesis, after Adam and Eve eat of the, the, the tree of knowledge, right? They eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge. God, I, does say, I, I believe he does say something that is very, I would say similar to, or not similar. He says something to the effect of now they're like us knowing good and evil. Do we know good and evil? Yes but we don't know it perfectly the way God knows it. There are certain things that everybody knows is good and evil, right? Everyone knows it's evil to kill somebody else. Everyone knows that it's evil not to feed your children, to make your children starve. So there, there are things like that, you know, everybody knows it's evil to like smack an infant. Like th those are obviously everybody knows that, right? And everybody knows stealing is wrong. There are laws about stealing, murder, in every single country. We know those are things that everybody knows is wrong. But there are other things that we actually debate about what is good and what is evil. There are a lot of social... Uh, there, are, there are a lot of social conflicts, right, that we discuss and that are or social issues there are plenty of social issues that essentially we're trying to figure out and we're arguing about what is good or what is right and what is wrong right and what did i just say the conscience is the conscience tells us what is right and what is wrong so for example for some people in their conscience right what's right is if they don't want to have a child the right thing to do is to have an abortion and they might think it's okay to have an abortion before the child really you know develops limbs and things like that because there, there would be less pain right for for that child and then there are some people who would think that abortion is doesn't matter when you get the abortion if you don't want the kid then get the abortion and they think it's fine and and they think that that's right and then there are other people who think no right and that's what their conscience would tell them oh my conscience tells me that because I can't afford to have this child and because I don't want this child then I, it, it's the right thing to do the responsible thing to do is to have an abortion right it's a responsible thing to do to have an abortion when I'm 16 years old because I'm only 16 years old and they would say that that's correct. And then there are other people who say, no, that's wrong. So does everyone really know what is right and what is wrong? And is everyone's conscience telling them what is truly right and what is truly wrong? No. I can understand right why someone would think I don't want this child or I'm only 16 it doesn't make sense for me to have a child so I need to have an abortion so yeah that would be correct you're 16 it doesn't make sense for you to have a child that's absolutely correct 
right? Your conscience is telling you, right, that, that would be right. It doesn't make sense for you to have a child when you are 16. Now, what you do after that, right, the decision you make after that, which would be to have an abortion, that's probably not the, the right thing, right? That's, that's a, that, that, that wouldn't be the right thing if we're looking at it from a Christian world view. But there are some people, that's what their conscience tells them, right? So we can't assume that the, everybody's conscience is the voice of God. That's not true. And there is a verse, I don't know the exact verse, but I am alluding to it, and so I will include it in the, the description below in Romans, where it says that God eventually lets people go, and he simply turns away from them, and he lets them basically relish in, in their own sin, and just, you know, allows them to, to basically do whatever they want, and he leaves them. And they think, everybody thinks whatever they do is the right thing to do. And that's all, not always necessarily true, right? And in their conscience, they think it's right. The only way for our conscience to be perfect, I guess, and I don't think our conscience will always be perfect, because if it were, then we wouldn't need God. But the only way to try and get it to be God and to get our conscience to sound like the voice of God is through a relationship, having a relationship with, with God and constantly nurturing that relationship with God. And the Bible says that we need to renew our minds. But if our conscience was always, right, the voice of God, if our conscience is always right, if, if our conscience is always right, if our conscience is always perfectly right and perfectly wrong because we think that our conscience is the voice of God, then why would we need to renew our mind? I would ask for discernment when we don't, we, we may know what's right and what's wrong, but we don't know it perfectly. And there are a lot of times where we think and our con we think our conscience is telling us to do this and we think that that's the right thing to do and it could be coming from a good place, but it it might not be the right thing to do, right? So, we need discernment. We need discernment. We can't always trust our conscience. Our conscience is, unfortunately, af uh, afflicted by the fallen world we live in. And the adversary loves to... to the, your mind is a playground for the adversary. I wouldn't trust everything you think is your is coming from your conscience and your conscience can be wrong and I wouldn't say that your conscience is the voice of God our conscience is actually what separates us from every other creature in the world right uh, creatures act from instinct and we have a conscience we can think but that doesn't mean that everything we think, even if it's coming from our conscience, is right and that it's the voice of God. Again, our conscience can be afflicted by living in a fallen world. The adversary can manipulate our conscience and we can think something's right because, well, that's what my conscience tells me is right, and it's actually not right. Or it could be right in one way, but it's wrong in another way. So that, that those were kind of my thoughts when I was listening to that sermon. And what do you think? Do you think the conscience is the perfect, is the, the, the perfect voice of God? Or do you think that people's conscience 
uh, is, is, is like what I think is, you know, can be afflicted by the fallen world. Let me know in the comments below.